Do I have to read your lips for 20 seconds? <laughs> no, no. We, we would have been done um, speaking, and then you'll you'll receive it. Okay. And uh, hyperspace, it's got to travel for 20 seconds to you. So we, we won't be um, like looking dubbed like those old foreign films that are dubbed <laughs> with English. I hope we don't look like that. <laughs> So this is uh, the first time that we've ever tried this. We've done some Skype teaching before, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I'm attending. Ojibwe Anishinaabe and Dao, 
Saginaw, King and Don Jabal. Now, Mr. Wen Dan Li Medewian. My name is William Johnson, and I'm the curator here at the Zebra Wing Center. And I've been employed with the Saginaw Chippewa Tribe in the Zebra Wing Center for 16 years. Oh! Oh, wow. Bonjour, Anita Heard. I have been a Zebra Wing employee for must be 12 years. All right. Well, bonjour, Anita Wing. I'm Anita Duck. I'm going to go to the house. Bonjour, Anita Duck. Machi Beneshi wish Bodawatami Minwa Lakuta Ray Lick Superior Ojibwe Anishinaabe Kwee and Dao Waba Sho Zibi Ndonjiba Minwa Segana Ojibwe Anishinaabe King Ndonjiba Shaganashi Mowen Majima I'd like to welcome you. My name is Shannon Martin. I serve as the Director of Zibwe and I have been employed with the Saginaw Ojibwe Indian Tribe of Michigan with the Zibwe Cultural Society since November of 2001. So I'm coming up on uh, my 13-year uh, anniversary with, with the tribe, which is very exciting. Um, so again, we are, um, we're here as, as a staff, as a team, uh, to talk with you about, the, uh, about our large-scale community event. Uh, it's a community-directed event, and uh, it has evolved uh, over the years uh, since we began implementing uh, different types of programming uh, here at the Z-Wing uh, Center. So on, on, in May of 2004, uh, we officially opened our doors here to the Z-Wing Center. And uh, through that grand opening, we were directed by our community to ensure that uh, we provided uh, adequate types of programming, uh, that we were being uh, responsive to community needs and in, in, in designing and, and uh, implementing programming for the community. And it was community priority first. So we were directed to make sure that we were offering uh, supplemental, supplementary um, activities, workshops, events, opportunities to perpetuate um, our, our living and, and, uh, and our ancestral inheritance culture. So we've been um, excited to do that for the community and, and since 2004 uh, our programming initiatives have evolved and the focus for today is, is our three-day Native Fest which is, um, you know, it, it speaks to North American Indian culture. So through that Native Fest um, we do different types of uh, contemporary programming, uh, as well as uh, being responsive and, and respectful to um, our, our history. So um, I'm going to um, kind of be the wizard behind the, um, behind the curtain here, and we're gonna provide you with uh, just a glimpse at the um, evolution of how Native Fest started and what, uh, what we're currently doing now and, and has been successful for the last couple of years. And I'm gonna ask um, Willie, he's gonna speak to this first um, flyer, which was our first attempt. This was a first attempt for us to, uh, uh, to bridge our, our community through um, contemporary song. And uh, we offered um, a Native American music festival. And that was held in July of 2005. And Willie, if you want to speak. Yeah, I would love to, to talk about that first uh, uh, music uh, event. Um, but if, if I could just um, go back a little uh, to, to 1998 uh, was when we first hosted the, uh, the Zebra Wing Center's um, cultural celebration. And, and it was a beautiful opportunity to present to the Saginaw Chippewa tribal community um, uh, dance. And, and singing and exhibits and, and um, the Zebra Wing Center's work, uh, all the, the educational programming that we were doing at that time in 1998. And I can recall Judy um, uh, uh, at that particular event and she was um, uh, doing the partridge dance uh, ra rather flirtatiously. <laughs> and, and, and I remember it really well. And, and I've a, always- It's a mating dance. <laughs> And I always remember that, that cultural celebration leading up to some of the things that we would do uh, in the future, uh, most specifically our, um, our, our music uh, night, or actually it was in the daytime. And uh, that was so long ago that um, uh, we actually had the, the back settlement boys uh, 
that come and performed um, music in the um, uh, Nishinaabe Mo Win. And it was a real awesome uh, time to, to uh, celebrate uh, the beauty of the language and music with these folks. And then we also had um, uh, one of our very own Saginaw Chippewa tribal members. Um, uh, what was her name? Come on, come on. Um, I'm forgetting her name right, right off the bat, but we, we just brought her back Anna again. Anna Mae Mitchell. Anna Mae Mitchell uh, come and perform for us. And uh, so we had the Back Settlement Boys and Anna Mae Mitchell come and play. And um, it was a really awesome opportunity uh, also to work with our uh, Saginaw Chippewa tribal member, um, uh, Mr. Pigo, Paul Pigo. And Paul came and performed for us that, that time too. So it was three um, uh, Anishinaabe uh, musical acts. And uh, that, that seemed like so long ago. And I can remember that particular day when we had the concert and it was um, uh, done on a, a music stage with no roof. <laughs> and the sun was, was hot and it was burning up all the musicians. <laughs> And we, we, we thought that, you know, as, as we improved upon the, the actual event for the community, that we would have a, uh, the musicians under, underneath a tent. So that was one of the first things that uh, we improved upon uh, that particular event. And what you're seeing is a flyer. So, um, again, the, you know, 2005, this predates social, social media and networking. So we were old school with our publicity. Um, just a lot of guerrilla marketing efforts, so just printing off flyers, multiple flyers, and posting them up all over the reservation. And then um, we had the capability again, to email the flyer, and then our um, tribal um, website uh, would post the flyer. I think we also took out old school newspaper ads too, just to invite the, um, the uh, greater uh, outside community to the, the music fest. So going back to music, we, um, this was in 2005, and we evolved this. In 2006, uh, to be a week-long celebration of North American Indian culture, and this is the first time, the first reference, that we um, packaged this all as Native Fest, as Native Fest. Um, so I'm going to have um, Willie and Anita uh, speak to uh, the new changing exhibit and how that component came to life. And then we're going to turn it over to Judy and she'll talk with you about uh, car bingo and how these two elements uh, truly uh, informed and, and directed us to what we're currently doing today. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I absolutely have to talk about is um, our former Saginaw Chippewa tribal member, Jolene Quinlan. And Jolene was an is, is an amazingly talented artist who ha had opportunity to, to kind of uh, do, do the, the artwork for us leading up to that last event that we showed you. And, and then also um, the Native Fest logo, if I can recall, she did that one too. Uh, but Jolene uh, still does um, uh, uh, beautiful artwork uh, to, to this very day. And it's always a pleasure working with her whenever we need her that way. So um, one of the things um, that we've realized here at the Zebra Wing Center is that you know, we have a beautiful uh, tribal collections, a permanent collection, um, and uh, we, we don't always have an opportunity to display you know, uh, the, the entirety uh, of its contents you know, to the tribal community. So one of the ways um, that we bring the exhibit to, to the forefront is to showcase uh, quarterly uh, exhibits and then we even have opportunity to showcase a, a changing exhibit during the Native Fest time. Uh, the flyer that you're looking at, uh, we worked with um, uh, Mr. Joel Lyles uh, and he did a beautiful um, uh, series of powwow uh, posters and uh, we, we worked with uh, Joe, Joe to bring the posters to the tribal community here and we displayed them and it was a... Now attending, Amy, Madison, Wisconsin. Hey, Amy, Hi. and how you doing? So, so Joe, um, we worked with Joe to bring the uh, powwow posters to, um, to, to the uh, Zebra Wing Center and it was really beautiful show and then also work with the Zebra Wing Center's exhibit design team in regard to the marketing materials and then also all the, um, the, the things that the, the community would come and be able to interpret the posters on the wall. Um, 
And then that leads us to, to the, this previous um, exhibit where we showcase Smokey Joe Jackson, uh, our Saginaw Chippewa tribal member who was skilled at uh, carving and, and painting uh, his sculptures uh, of wildlife. And, and uh, that, that exhibit just recently came down. Well, I really enjoyed it that the timing of the Smokey Joe uh, exhibit because a lot of his family would be coming into town for the powwow, and so they had an opportunity to speak on and celebrate their family members' artwork. And it's a collection that we have uh, quite a few um, items that have never been able to be displayed, and so it was pretty exciting to be able to pull them out. That, that, that actual uh, collection came to us uh, in 2001, I think, when Shannon first came to the Zebra Wing Center uh, from the Chippewa Nature Center in Midland, Michigan. And uh, that actual collection uh, was, was being shopped around to the University of Michigan or Michigan State University. Um, uh, one Alice Gardner, our ex-employee, sent a letter to the representatives of the Chippewa Nature Center and then um, secured the, that collection for, for the Saginaw Chippewa people. So uh, Smokey Joe uh, come from, uh, that collection come from um, Midland Chippewa Nature Center to the Saginaw Chippewa tribe, and it's been here since that time, and it's, it's our responsibility to share it with the world. Wonderful. When you're talking about this event, timing is everything, especially if you're wanting a large audience and knowing who your audience is. So part of what we did is this um, festivities, the Native Fest, is timed right around the, our annual powwow, and it has evolved to where on a na uh, Saginaw Chippewa national level that this is called our homecoming week. You'll have the Saginaw Chippewa national holiday during that time, you'll have the big powwow during that time, and they bring the at-large members that live around the world, they offer them the opportunity to come home. We, we want to see you. So planning this was to take and really, what can we offer our community members? But listening to them, what do they need? So when you think about the collection showings, it's um, oftentimes families and community members saying, well, I'd like to learn more about this topic, or um, hey, I know my grandfather or my uncle or my aunt donated you know, a collection of black ash baskets. No, have you ever thought of showing those? So we really listen to our community members. When you open up the um, festivities to the whole mid-Michigan and Michigan at large, then it's also listening to your larger population of what do they want to see and making sure they also feel comfortable enough to come out and join us so that we're bridging our two communities together with this event. Part of the goal, when you heard Willie talk about the first year, it was to not only show us in our regalia, do the dances and maybe the older drummings, and, but doing contemporary music. We want to educate the world at large that we're not stuck in the past. You know, our culture is alive, well, living and evolving. And we want to share that with them so that, they, that the whole world, as well as our own community, can see the progress that we're making, that our, our culture is indeed alive. The car bingo came from community's members saying, you know, our young generations forget our humble beginnings, that they can't even remember back when the roads were all dirt, you know, and the tar shacks are here, and, and that to play bingo was up on the hill. When we say up on the hill, that's what we call our campground where the bowl is held. And they would just park their cars out there, and then they would call bingo over a megaphone. And then, um, if you won, you would honk your horns, and a runner would come running over to your car with their megaphone, and then they would call back the numbers, and if you won, then you would honk even more crazy, so then everybody would honk with you, and everybody would get happy you know, for you. And um, that's our humble beginnings into gaming as one of our enterprises. So we had community members saying that they, you know, we should commemorate that. And we should use this as an opportunity to help educate our younger children that don't know that history, as well as maybe those community members at large that haven't lived here in our community, and the general public, how we got into the gaming enterprise and those humble beginnings. 
It develops so much so that um, we, we joke around today, it's almost called the car, boat, golf gym, cart. golf cart, bingo. <laughs> you know, because you never know what's going to show up to be parked in the parking lot to play bingo on. That they own, our community members get playful and they try to outdo each other. Like, what most outrageous vehicle can we show up in to play bingo in now? And so that, the, that playfulness, that, that humor that we have, that Indian humor, has become a part of this um, event today. And so we look with our larger community as well as our, the companies that we deal with on a tribal level. Where can we get prizes so that we're just not always having to out of pocket do the prizes? And then that has eventually over here um, evolved to where we start looking for sponsorships, but I'll wait until we get more in the year of that. So this, uh, this first <coughs> attempt uh, at car bingo happened in 2006. And um, we've been doing it every year, so it's, it's a lasting component of our Native Fest now. People look forward to it. And it, it continues to grow from, from year to year. It's, it also serves as a fundraiser. So Zeebway this year uh, captured nearly $5,000 for cultural education and programming efforts for next fiscal year from our car bingo activities. So um, people buy packets and it's open to all ages because we don't uh, give away cash so we're not uh, uh, infringing on the um, tribe's gaming, uh, federal gaming policy. Uh, the National Indian Gaming uh, Compliance Policies. So all ages can play bingo. <coughs> and we give out prizes that um, we've, we've been able to um, uh, have donated to us. So this first um, attempt at Native Fest, we also tacked on uh, our uh, Indigenous Peoples Art Market. And uh, we wanted to bring it uh, back home to Zeebwink because prior to this year, we were holding it at the Soaring Eagle Resort over in the Entertainment Hall. So to uh, reduce cost and overhead and to um, create more traffic here at Zeebwink, uh, we incorporated the Indigenous Peoples uh, Art Market and Music Festival into Native Fest. And uh, we're, here to, we're here to tell you, you know, we're not afraid to admit our failures and uh, our overcompensations. <laughs> and um, holding it uh, here at Zeebwing, uh tacked in right before the powwow was not the optimal, ideal time to hold our art market. It was during the midweek. Uh, we, did, we did not attract very many artists because it was during the week. They understood that the powwow was going to be that weekend, uh, so they they felt you know some of the fine artists that we were hoping to attract here felt that it was it was going to be um, there was too much uh, going on, and that it would be um, detrimental to their sales. So our um, when we moved the Indigenous People Art Market into Native Fest, it did not work. It did not work. So we did not do it again the following year. Uh, we kept our Indigenous Peoples Art Market separate and we moved it back to where it was successful in October. So not only did we change venue, we changed the dates, uh, we changed the season, and then it was midweek rather than like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday when you typically uh, capture lots of, of people for art market type festivals. Uh, and then uh, we had Indigenous performing uh, Kevin Chamberlain, um, and then that led up to the Saginaw Chippewa Powwow that weekend. So it was a it was a very very busy week in 2006 for us, which uh, we found success. So of course the the component with the changing exhibit and car bingo that was successful for us. Those were two events that people uh, enjoyed. Yeah, that seems mind-boggling. I'm looking at the flyer and, and I'm thinking, we actually did that? Um, it, it seems like that, that was an awful lot of work to be doing. Uh, but, but of course, we were younger in those days, too. <laughs> Small staff, but younger, so we could push ourselves harder. And, and if I could just interject just a little piece on, on car bingo. Uh, one of the things that I was most pleased about our, our car bingo this past year was uh, one Yogi Jackson, one of our Saginaw Chippewa tribal elders, was playing bingo, and he was actually honored from the bingo calling stand. And 
uh, as being one of the first car bingo callers for the numbers and stuff. So I was pretty happy that uh, Yogi was, uh, as our tribal elder, was uh, participating with that, that event that he participated in so long ago, back in the 70s, I'm sure. So that um, moves us to 2014, which we just celebrated uh, our most recent Native Fest. And uh, from 2006 to 2014, um, we came together as a team and community and, and we assessed what worked and what didn't. And um, you know, we're not afraid to admit that if something didn't work, we're, gonna, we're not gonna do it again, but we'll, we'll think of other ways and refine what we're doing. So we knew that car bingo was successful. People loved it and it keeps growing every year. Um, so then we began to think about, well, how could we subsidize car bingo so that the entire, uh, the entire revenue generated from car bingo can be uh, completely dedicated as a donation to our cultural and educational programming initiatives. And we started to look at um, uh, corporate sponsors who would begin funding uh, Native Fest, and we were we we found success in 2008, where we were able to uh, work with one of our tribal council members, a treasurer at the time, and uh, council shared with us the top 20 vendors for the tribe. So those top 20 companies uh, that were that were you know, benefiting from our success here as a tribal nation. And we looked at those lists, and Judy was a part of that. So I want to have her speak to how uh, we were able to work with the bank at the time. I think it was National City. Right, National City. Um, we were new to the arena of looking for sponsors. Um, the performer director, Bonnie Eftel, and I, you know, when we talked about it, it would be nice if we could get sponsors, and. Um, and she kind of chuckled, and she's like, oh, okay, get on that. And I said, oh, I've never done that. She goes, well, me neither. Uh, and she goes, but maybe you can research it. So it literally was us getting online, looking at other events. Did they have sponsors? How did they write them up? Um, what you know, perks did people get for being our sponsors? And then asking other people about, well, what does sponsorship mean? And so somebody says, well, if you can help meet the company's goals, then oftentimes they're able, willing to sponsor your event. So then it was, now we have to look at those top 20 companies and what are their goals? And how does the z Wing Center help them meet their goals? So that kind of really helped us narrow down who we should really go after for our sponsorships. But we had to do our background work first. So we wrote a standard letter, and again, um, we were very fortunate that National City and we worked with them, had tribal council, we had let tribal council know what we were trying to do, so they were talking with them on one hand, we were writing the letters and following up with them, and they were very generous and sponsored that. We were just floored by that, because you know, we just was throwing out the fish line and wasn't sure we were going to get anything in return for it. We were so thankful, because then again, that freed up what little bit of funds we were making could actually go into the culture events instead of just paying for this event here. Because this event is very expensive to put on. The, the, key, um, the key element for that fundraising is, um, what Judy talked about, is finding out what funding objectives or goals these corporations have. Um, many of them support cultural and artistic uh, initiatives. So, and then, um, and, and really truly, it, it, some of them just welcome a letter and if they, they understand how much business that they are reaping from the tribe, uh, it's just a natural fit. Uh, the key is uh, to work with your tribal council treasurer and C CFO, um, because those two um, individuals primarily work uh, with these outside companies. I mean, they are your, you know, they are your, your bean counters and your check writers. And um, these companies do not want to upset your check writers and, and especially your tribal council treasurer or chief. So get them on board to, to help advocate uh, with some of the companies that um, you're writing out some of your biggest checks to. Uh, so National City uh, handled the tribe's entire financial portfolio uh, at that time. So they were, you know, as well as individual member accounts. 
So individual tribal members, uh, the majority had personal checking or savings accounts with National City. So it was, it was um, a pretty easy decision for them, uh, one of their vice presidents for um, external relations, to see that fit, to give back to this tribe and, and to give it in a, in a wonderful way such as Native Fest that would benefit the entire community. The other thing we learned is that with sponsorships, when it came to our marketing materials and that, we now had to have a longer timeline because they wanted time to prove things and make sure their logos were added, looked right. And so that first year, we didn't have our long enough timeline because we were just learning. So what had to happen the following year is when we were going after sponsors again and stuff that we had to take and start planning this even months before what we previously thought we had to because the marketing material had to be created in the timeline enough to go to our sponsors, get suggestions from them, come back, get changes, take it back to the sponsors, have them tweak it again, and sometimes that was two and three times. And then finally when they gave the goal, now we can get it out to the general public. So, so that lengthened our marketing deadline. So as you can see, um, for 2014, our exclusive car bingo sponsor uh, is Wells Fargo Insurance. Their, their logo needs, their graphic design standards and treatment of their logo needs a certain uh, uh, percentage of, of white space around it so that it stands out. So we have, you know, as, as a, a tribe and as an organization that is uh, working with a sponsor, you've got to adhere to their graphic standards. That's what Judy was talking about. And sometimes it takes weeks uh, for them to get back with you and approve a proof of a flyer or an external ad. Um, so over the years, we've you know we've gone from uh, Native Fest being about a twenty-five thousand dollar event. Uh, National City was the ex exclusive sponsor, and then they were uh, obtained by um, uh, PNC. So when uh, PNC obtained the uh, National City, the tribe uh, retained their contract. Uh, and, and just transferred it to, to PNC. And then for three or four years, uh, three years, PNC was our exclusive sponsor for all of the Native Fest activities. Uh, but then, you know, as, as the tribe evolves and there's, you know, contracts run out, those are always evaluated and assessed. So about two years ago, the tribe uh, evaluated the contract and uh, uh, PNC, their way of doing things was not the same way as National City, and, and their way of contractual agreements infringed upon the tribe's inherent sovereignty. So any litigation PNC would not budge on to be tried in tribal court. They wanted uh, any litigation to be tried in, in a state court, the state court of law. And uh, our council at that time would not assign this tribe to compromise our tribal sovereignty. So they began shopping for a, a, a new uh, financial, uh, a new financial corporation to oversee the tribe's portfolio, and they eventually settled on Wells Fargo. So we had to start over from scratch and develop new contacts and share information with uh, representatives from Wells Fargo. And um, Wells Fargo uh, works with a lot of tribes across the country in their corporate giving program. Uh, it it uh, assists many events like ours across the country in tribal communities. So their funding level, unfortunately for Native Fest, is not at the same level as what PNC and National City, what we were used to receiving from those two other big banks. Um, but it's baby steps. So right now they're funding um, our car bingo event at uh, $6,000. And it's just an outright donation. So uh, we don't have to... Um, sign any binding agreement regarding marketing. So for Car Bingo, it's, it's Wells Fargo. And then, if you guys want to speak to how we carried on the music but added the other elements of comedy. Do you want to start the music by this one? Where are we at? Music and comedy night. <laughs> um, so we retained yeah, okay. um, that element of, of wanting to make sure we, we uh, provided a stage for contemporary musicians, indigenous musicians. That was successful.
from way back in 2005. So we kept that element within our Native Fest. So we have a night dedicated to music. And then over the years, um, it was actually Willie, you know, over the years talked about, um, we've got some funny Indians around here. Indians <laughs> love to laugh, so yeah. really, if you wanna. Yeah, you know, we've always fancied ourselves as, as, uh, as um, uh, comedians, you know, here at the Zebra Wing Center, where we always, you know, share a joke and, and, and you know, not always approach our work from, you know, an amazingly intellectual way and serious way. We certainly do that, but we also love to incorporate humor in what we do. And and the the Zebra Wing Center, you know, had the opportunity to consider, you know, well, you know, we should we should uh, consider a, a, a tribal comedy slam, and we we could actually uh, host, you know, the the members of our tribal community, and they could share jokes, and and that would be one way to offset. Uh, having to pay for a comedian, and um, it was actually, uh, it has been amazingly successful for the last couple of years. And for the other parts of the event is, um, this ends up being such a large event, it attracts families. And if we, all, those of us who have children and grandchildren, we know just because um, somebody's performing on stage or even the comedy acts are happening, the kids are wanting to run and move and that. So we really have to start putting more thought of um, what can we do for the children? so that they were having as festive of an evening as the adults were. So over the years, we've tried different things, you know, so we did face painting, and that was just calling up community members in, in our communities that, you know, was willing to take and draw a little, maybe a balloon or a Spider-Man or a butterfly on the children's face, and having them do the face painting, so we have an area there. We've had some years where we put up a big canopy and just put in um, kids, pools full of sand with little sand toys so then they had like a little beach area that could just be playing in the dirt with our real young kids. And we have, we're bringing lots of what we call the bouncy houses. So those um, things where the kids can get in, they can jump around in that. So we bring in um, three different levels, one for more like your five and under, so just a very small one for them. And then a medium sized one where the kid can just get in and maybe jump because kids just love to jump around. And then the obstacle course ones for like your young adults, your teens and that. And, and even our staff will go out there and try them out before our guests show up so even adults can get in them. So, so we have that going on. We have our balloon artists that we found just, again, word of mouth, just ask them what else. This is listening to our guests coming in, say, have you ever thought of having this come in? Have you ever had, thought of you know having balloon art? Well, okay, what is it? Where do you where would you find one? So just asking, and then our offering those services free to to our families that are there. Then our character artists, we actually reached out and asked how much would they charge us to come in for the, the two hours of this event, and so then we just kind of divided up the fee of well we need to make that money back so we're not taking out of the, the Z point pocket. Can we at least cover that by um, having our guests pay for those spots? So you'll see there's a $5 caricature. And, and if you've ever been to any big national parks, like I just, our way we have Cedar Point, it's like $40 to get somebody to draw your picture as a caricature. <laughs> Where here you come to Native Fest and for $5 you can sit down and get your picture drawn. If there's three of you, it's $15. So, so it's about to where it's a full family event. And not only family, and for our community, but the community at large, but even international, because um, oftentimes in the larger community, their sister city is from Japan, and we've hosted full groups of the Japanese students here with us for those nights. And so it's, it's almost becoming even international because of those relationships that were developed. Uh, if I could just step back with the with the comedy, the, the Zebra Wing Center and the Native Fest was hosting some of the most awesome uh, indigenous uh, comedians um, throughout the nation, and we hosted um, uh, was it Mitch Factor? I believe his name was Mitch Factor. Was just amazingly funny. Also Don Burnstick, and and then uh, our our Buddy perennial Buddy. favorite. Buddy Big Mouth, and, and, and the tribal communities just used to, you know, to love that that portion of, of the Native Fest, you know, with these uh, international uh, indigenous comedians, and and of course once we lost the um, the sponsorship from National City, 
uh, it was difficult to maintain that quality uh, of comedians. So that's where you know we, we relied upon the tribal community to start sh sharing some jokes. Homegrown comedians, Home and, and 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 it's and it's been amazingly successful the last two years. So so this year we did a huge um, track as well as an adult. So we opened up to an adult little competition and then a youth competition. Okay. And the, the youth the winner uh, took home from the Soaring Eagle Water Park and Hotel, they took home a two night stay with water park passes. So that, that went to the winner for the youth. And then the adult comedy slam winner uh, was given a two night stay at the Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort with a dining uh, card, a $50 dining card and an opportunity to um, identify a concert. So they were given two tickets of their choice to whatever concert they wanted. So it's, it's enticing. I mean, to, it was, you know, those are great incentives to um, bring out our own community members to compete in an uh, amateur comedy slam. And then the crowd, you know, by crowd, uh, by crowd support uh, and applause, they actually select the winners. And, and part of losing that big funder for this event, and then us having to get more creative, we've also gotten more creative with collaborating with other governmental departments, as well as our um, government enterprises for prizes. And so it's reaching out to you know our depart other department and saying, can you help run this or uh, activity for the night? Can you come over and be part of the face painting? Can you come over and set up a, a booth that's doing this? So. We don't have to do it all by ourselves. We can reach out to our other government departments to help now organize and run this event. So from a um, 20, about a $25,000 uh, event, we have um, scaled down and streamlined it so that it's still very significant and fun and we haven't lost very many elements to the, how original NativeFest was when we had a big money sponsor. Um, but we've streamlined that down thanks to our sales and events coordinator, Glenna Jenneru, and her, you know, her willingness to not be afraid to ask, ask for donations and talk to people, and using her network um, to, to, you know, get anything, like a free case of hop. I mean, just anything, she's not afraid to ask, so a go-getter like Glenna is, is an asset. Um, but this budget total now is um, it's under twelve thousand dollars. So we have trimmed off ten thousand, almost half of that original budget. But still, we've retained uh, all of the the fun and uh, wonderful elements of Data Fest. We've actually added added things because we never had bounce houses. Right. But you know, we thank our tribal housing department for providing that year to year. Uh, and they're able to do that through a community betterment grant. So they know that um, we're going to be asking them every year to provide that component, a native fest for the kids. And then, of course, our collection showing is, is always another uh, important part of native fest. So we're three days and we preempt the powwow, uh, which Judy mentioned is great because it, it's a homecoming. So at this point, uh, we want to ask if there's any questions, and then uh, the final part of our webinar is we're going to take you through uh, what our uh, sponsorship proposals look like and what we use this year. And um, again, we'll roll call after we're done uh, with our hour, and we'll make sure that we email you all of the elements that we just talked about from our marketing, uh, as well as we'll send you a PDF of what we send to different companies and corporations and, and how that works and what we promise them if they if they donate money to our event. So we're gonna send you that whole proposal. Um, so we're excited to, uh, once again to be here with you and um, we'll move into that proposal element and just take a quick glance at it and then we'll open this up for, for discussion. And then if I could just interject before Shannon gets busy with that, uh, my most favorite part of Native Fest is, is the fact that uh, the Zebra Wing Center no longer owns this event. This is a true community, uh, a tribal community-wide event where people expect this from us, including our tribal council. And it's just a pleasure to be able to present it to the, for the community. Uh, and, and it's exceeded, the, the expectations of this event have exceeded our, our wildest dreams. And, and I'll take it a step further. And it's not only become almost like that national holiday element but again when you think of the communities at large that surround us 
it's become an event that they look forward to and that they know there's lots of festivities going on. And then when they have families and guests, our international guests, they plan this in. Um, and so much so, we had the um, mayor of Okaya and 20 city delegates from Japan come to Michigan and they were, they were um, sad they weren't able to plan it around this week that they missed it by a, a, um, about a month because of the difference in their programmings and that. But they were, heard a lot about the Native Fest and we were hopeful they were going to be able to go not only to our Powell but to our Native Fest and that. And, and that didn't happen, but we worked them in other areas of our programming. So quickly, I'm going to have Benita uh, talk you through the bullet points um, of this proposal. And I uh, apologize if it's small, you, you can't see it, but it's a three-page um, proposal uh, that we mail out to those vendors we identify who have uh, missions and goals and funding priorities that are published on their websites. And then uh, that's how we, how we try to leverage funding for our events. So the first element is of the event description. So then it, it cites the activities, the dates, and um, noting that it's the ninth annual um, Indian Car Bingo, and um, so that's an ongoing event. Talks about um, the kind of the mission statement or the outreach statement for Zeboy, and that we are a nonprofit and um, and providing culturally relevant relevant educational experiences, then what impact will this sponsorship have on the community? Um, it speaks about long-term community effects and um, the guests that you would, would be um, attending. Sponsorship allows the Wing Center to continue to offer music and comedy night as a free public event. Like Judy said, there are, there are a number of non-native families that come every year. Uh, I see their little ones painting, painting their faces. <laughs> um, and then it, it reduces by having uh, native, non-native interactions, it reduces, I feel, um, prejudice. Because once you know a native person, then it's harder to to accept the... the it really helps bridge our communities, mm -hmm. that's what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much of the sponsorship is being put to work in charitable or research programs, all of the sponsorship donation will offset costs of entertainment marketing, all of the bingo prizes and other event activities of the community. With the sponsorship, you will be able to continue offering music and comedy night. Um, dollar levels of sponsorship include, including benefits. And that's a pretty extensive list here. 20,000. Dollars to become the exclusive sponsor of Native Native Fest Music and Comedy Night. Six thousand dollars to become the exclusive sponsor of Native Fest Car Bingo. Six thousand dollars to sponsor comedian and special collection showings. Five thousand dollars to sponsor equipment rental, music and comedy night only, which was at the tent table staging, sound, etc. $3,000 to sponsor children's activities, the bouncers, caricatures, um, balloon artists, face painting. $3,000 to sponsor dinner and refreshments for music and comedy night only. Um, $1,500 to sponsor musician, one of two performances, music and comedy night only. One uh, 100 to 1,000 toward music and comedy night events. And the, the each of them um, include the um, promotional materials that's required, required for each of these. So what, um, what we promise in return is uh, uh, heavily advertising them uh, based on their level of commitment, level of funding. Um, so we, we work with our Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and they're, um, they're amenable always to providing a big ad placement uh, promoting Native Fest on this huge jumbotron billboard sign that's on uh, the main drag here in Mount Pleasant. Uh, we also have um, uh, throughout the resort there's internal um, uh, there's an internal video screens 
uh, and it uh, revolves um, different promotions on that, and we, we get into that rotation. And then on the um, slot machines themselves, there are now little video windows for further promotion. So they advertise their own specials at the Soaring Eagle, but for a special event like Native Fest or Indigenous People's Art Market, we create an ad that they enter into that rotation so that people can see that as they're playing slots. So those types of, um, those types of publicity uh, benefits that we're able to um, leverage corporate sponsorship is, is priceless because it's free for us and we're grateful to Soaring Eagle Casino Resort that they put us into those promotional rotations on all of their, their screens from the small slot machine screens to the big jumbotron on, on uh, M20 which is, goes right in front of the casino. Uh, so those are invaluable to us. So find those types of um, uh, marketing uh, opportunities within your own tribal system because generally it's free. You just have to design it and send them over the file and they'll put it in for you. Uh, but other types of advertising we, we, we promise is our own Inu Daga newsletter that we send out, um, our Facebook page. Uh, so a lot of, again, a lot of those are free. Very rarely, though, you know, unless it's a big sponsor, will we take out um, big um, pricey newspaper ads or radio spots. Uh, but you know, that money will, you know, the, the sponsorship level will dictate those higher end um, outside marketing campaigns like radio spots, TV ads, uh, and newspaper. Well, newspaper we ads. Into our um, tribal observers, our tribal paper, and then on our website. And then the also on the tribe's website. Yeah. So that's that's it. Um, these types of events, we we rely heavily on our staff. It's all hands on deck. Um, <laughs> Judy and I, you know, we let people know well in advance that um, under no extenuating circumstances, unless it's a dire emergency, will we approve your leave during that week because we need everyone here. Um, remarkably, we we um, we were able to capture and attract a lot of volunteers who help <coughs> us from throughout the tribe, young and old. Uh, old Z-Wing employees and board members always love to come back and help. So we get kind of the same crew who likes to do um, either car bingo, they like to help for the night, or they like to do music and comedy. And we, you know, we rely on them. Local politicians come out, you know, give them an opportunity to shake hands and kiss babies. Um, so they come out and help us as well if they're running for office, especially election year. They'll come out and serve food or uh, do other types of stuff. We um, included um, on the car bingo night, we reach out to our community and we open up. Um, everybody gets hungry that night because we're there late night playing bingo. So that night we offer up to the local community if anybody wants to do a fundraising tables and um, help their department, our help their organization, maybe it was the student, um, the youth council, maybe it's our youth councils, and, and maybe it's our park and rec department. Then they'll set up a booth and maybe sell hot dogs or popcorn and that, and then what money they make that night is to go to help their events later. And car bingo for the prizes, it's great for local businesses because they'll donate um, duplicate prizes that could be won uh, during one of the bingo games. So then they're heavily promoted as a, as a, um, a, don a donor for the car bingo. And you know, if it's the mole hole downtown and they give us two photo album books for new baby photo album books for a bingo winner, then we'll announce these, these um, photo album books are donated courtesy of the mole hole downtown and Main Street. So you know, there's a, there's a lot of great networking and collaboration and, and we've um, refined this so we're not spending um, tens of thousands of dollars to go to Walmart and purchase um, car bingo prizes. But now we're, you know, through Glenna's efforts, we're capturing all of those donations um, just by her calling and asking and building relationships, which, which establishes a stronger overall community and breaks down, like, like uh, Judy said, breaks down barriers and stereotypes. So at this time, we're, you know, we want to open this up and you know, if you have any, any thoughts, if you have any questions, we're, we're here for you. Are you still out there? Is anybody on phone? Yes. All right. Great presentation. 
presentation. Thank you. So again, we will, um, I'm going to have probably Anita do a roll call, and if we don't have your email address, you can share that with her, and we'll send you uh, all of Nancy the... Nancy Amy, Madison, Wisconsin. We'll send you all the materials that, um, that we, we referenced here on the smart board. So Rita, I think we have your email. Teresa, we have yours. Um, Reggie? Yep. Yeah. So you can shout out your email address. Shout out. Hey. Shout out. <laughs> it's R D O X T A T E at OneidaNation.org. T A D E? T A T E. At Oneida Nation.org. Omar also has my uh, contact information. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. All right. So, if there are no questions, uh, we're right at almost the two the hour. I've got uh, one announcement, and this is coming from Omar. Uh, he wants us to announce that they have confirmed October 23rd and 24th for the next Convening Culture Keepers Gathering. And I'd like to acknowledge our very own Teresa Mitchell, who's uh, online at Lac de Flambeau. So mm -hmm. Lac de Flambeau is hosting uh, the next Convening Cultures Gathering October 23rd and 24th. Miigwech, Teresa. Mm -hmm. At least she had to go to the gift shop. <laughs> okay, so um, on behalf of uh, our team here at Zeebwing, uh, we, we thank you for uh, signing on and, and being a part of this. Now attending. Hey, Omar. Hey. We're just wrapping up. Uh, great presentation, you guys. Sorry if I interrupted. I don't have the other audio stream on right now. Um, okay. Uh, but I wanted to let folks know too, um, if folks want to send me their email addresses and then we can collect uh, email addresses that way, um, and then we can send out that information too. Okay, wonderful. So Omar, I'll email you the materials we went through uh, as PDFs, and then you can share that with um, whomever contacts you who was a part of this um, live live stream. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, and I made the announcement about um, Lac de Flambeau. Great, great, yeah, the 23rd and 24th, Teresa Mitchell is gonna host that. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, on behalf of our team here at Zeeb Wing, uh, thank you for trusting us to uh, do an inaugural webinar. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge um, Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe of Michigan's Information Technology Department uh, particularly their skit media team uh, who was very responsive and excited to do this for us so uh, this is the first time I believe they said that the tribe has hosted a webinar uh, utilizing our own IT department and, and uh, kind of putting this together through live stream so uh, thank you uh, Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe of Michigan IT department and skit media and thank you to um, uh, University of Wisconsin, Institute of Museum and Library Services uh, for the, the grant and administration that allowed uh, this to happen. So uh, on behalf of all of us, we thank you. And uh, we say Bama P and see you in October. Bama P. Bama P. Bama P. Bama P. Bama P. Thank you all. Be good. Thanks, guys.